Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this video series. So in the first two videos, we discussed about Leonid's experience of masters in data science in Tudel, Netherlands, and how you can apply and get a teaching assistant in Netherlands and what is his experience, how much salary got. In this video specifically, we'll focus on part-time jobs, jobs, internships in computer science, data science in Tudel, Netherlands. So yeah, so let's start with the first question. How easy is it for an international English speaker who doesn't speak any Dutch to apply and get jobs, uh, maybe part time jobs or maybe some part time. I mean, part time jobs again can be two types like one which is not at all related to your studies or maybe something in a startup which is related to data science. So what is your experience of that or whatever you have heard about from others? Like how easy is it? Yeah, so first let's talk about the part time job, which is very non technical, let's say in, in this way. <clears throat> so, uh, without knowing Dutch, it's definitely difficult, but I won't say it's not possible uh, because I got one. Yeah, so eventually I got my PhD already, so I said no to that one. So, it's possible to get it, but also it's very, uh, it's very hard uh, to survive on a local job while studying. While doing a master thesis, it's, it still may be possible. Uh, but uh, I won't really suggest that that doing a part time job when you're already having courses because the coursework is uh, it, it, it's not an easy task to do. So that's about the non technical one. And if I talk about the technical one, it's a bit more easier to get a technical job uh, speaking in English because here um, I think the because of the COVID recently, they want more Dutch speakers. And like in, in fact, KPN in the email, they said it. Uh, they said it that uh, since we have reduced the number of vacancies, so, so now uh, we are only seeking Dutch speakers. So I think that, that that's mostly because of the COVID now, but it's it's definitely possible even I got one uh, and uh, and the salary you expect is uh, for the non-technical internships, like two days a week, uh, you expect around 400 to 700. But uh, if you get a good company like ABN AMRO, which one uh, I got, so they offer more money to the TUDEL student. So they were uh, offering me around 1200 uh, euros working two days a week, which is definitely a lot of money uh, as a student. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. So unfortunately, since I was, I wanted to stay in research, so I had to stay, say no to that one. Okay. But yeah. So uh, this is the salary expectation. So it's possible to get it. Uh, but I won't really uh, suggest doing it while doing your coursework, while doing your master thesis. You can still try, but I have I have friends uh, who did it, and their thesis got a bit extended because of that. So it depends on your choice. If you want to stay in the industry, that experience will count a lot. Uh, but if you want to be a researcher or a PhD, doing a TA is uh, is more is more advisable, which happened uh, in my case that. Uh, my TA experience counted a lot when I applied for the PhD. Okay, so if you want to know about his experience of teaching assistant, check the previous video in the iCard so that where we described in details about it. So moving on to the next question, uh, based on your experience or the applications that you made before finishing your master's, uh, can you like name uh, some companies that are available in Netherlands where you can find positions which are more related to data science uh, companies. Yeah, so now this data term is, is very hot uh, in the market and uh, it sales. So uh, every company has the data. It depends on the company where they whether they want to process or, or do the data science on their data internally or they want to export it. So if I talk about the opportunities, data science is a very hot topic and uh, definitely it has a lot of scope in Netherlands, especially uh, if we talk about data science as an umbrella term, if we take everything in it, like the AI, the machine learning, it's a huge market in Netherlands and, the, and uh, especially the government is putting a lot of money in AI field. Like the position I got uh, is sponsored by the government. So data science, it's, a, it's definitely in terms of research as well. And I think in, in terms of the industry, uh, the, the big recruiters of the data science graduates uh, from the TU Delft are the mainly the banks, which are the ING, ABN AMRO. Uh, Rabobank is also a, a big recruiter, uh, but they need Dutch, I guess. Uh, so that's a point to keep in your mind. But if you're a data science graduate, I would say in a non-COVID situation, 
definitely you can get a good job without knowing Dutch. Uh, KPN is also a very big recruiter. Uh, these are the four main uh, main companies, but definitely there are innumerable number of companies who employ data science in general, like not something specific to machine learning or computer vision. Uh, ABN AMRO is uh, ABN AMRO is a very big company which employ TUDL students while uh, while studying already. So like uh, I told already that I got an internship which was two days ago, and they really so in the interview they did not ask me even a technical single technical question. They said yeah we, you are from TUDL we are going to employ you. So this TUDL name also kind of sells that I have experience personally. Okay, okay, that is good to know. So you keep that in mind when you are choosing the universities, be it in any country. Uh, yeah, so as you mentioned about internship, that is the last question of this part of the interview. So uh, yeah, so how much salary can someone expect in the internships? And uh, like, is is a internship? Uh, so when you get an internship in industry, uh, are there any specific requirements? Like how easy is it as compared to getting a job in that same company? Or it is more related to the university or the track you are studying by which you can easily get an internship? Like what is your experience? Yeah, so if we talk about the internships, uh, I already mentioned the salary. It's like four, 400 to 700 a month, but some companies pay you more. Like I told about the ABN AMRO opportunity. Uh, but definitely, uh, it's it's not a very easy option to get it. I mean, uh, they do a lot of pre-processing here. Uh, so the name of the uh, name of the university sells, but they they also verify you. Maybe they won't ask you technical questions, uh, but definitely they are experienced person. Like they are working in this field for 10, 15 years. So even even the professors for PhD, they they don't ask you directly technical questions, but. Uh, but they discuss your projects and uh, they, they kind of can feel that how, how you are as a person and also how you will work. So I think that plays a lot of role here. Uh, finding inter an internship, I won't say that it's a very easy option because I have friends who didn't get it. And also the problem is uh, in the data science course, uh, the, the internship doesn't have a credit. So it's optional for you to do it. So most people skip it because after one year, we all are, all are kind of tired and at least want to go home. Uh, so that's all that all that's also a scene here for the data science because in other courses, they go, they get a credit. So they sometimes do the internship while as, as part of the course as well. So I was doing a five credit or 10 credit course on on the option on. On the other hand, I'm, I'm doing a five or 10 credits internship. But for the data science, I think some people skip it because after one year, they want to go back home. OK, so one thing I just want to add here, uh, I mean, I want to know your uh, side of the your view on that. So how is the startup culture uh, as you have experienced or you have heard in maybe getting a part time job or internship or a job in data science in Netherlands? Do you think is it very thriving or what is your experience? I think it depends on the startup. So I already had a had a job offer, which was a, a startup, and uh, yeah, so I I would be there one and on, only and first employee. Uh, so that's a really like startup in the sense, but really startup. I mean, they are just starting. So uh, it depends on the startup that what kind of profile they they, they need. Since data science uh, is a very growing field, uh, I think more than data science. If I talk about machine learning more. So machine learning, deep learning, and computer vision, these fields are very much growing now. Also, it's a very new field. So uh, the startup culture is, is, is growing in Netherlands uh, more and more, and they are investing a lot of money on that. And the government gives support. Uh, in fact, the university has some grants for professors to start startup. So if I talk about machine learning startups, uh, it's, uh, it's a good opportunity to look for startups most in LinkedIn. And I think getting a job in startups, uh, it's more about the connections you make uh, in it and more about uh, how much you can reach out to people. I had an interview at the startups and uh, mostly they look at your personality and they believe the TUDL brand a lot. So they judge these two things and also they check the, the, the type of courses you do. And uh, it's very rare, but sometimes they talk to your professor as well as a recommendation. 
because some companies it happens that they don't have a technical background so it's hard for uh, them to judge your technical understanding uh, so that's why they talk to your professor so that is the thing about the startup culture but I won't say it's easy, but it's definitely possible. And uh, it's more about the connections you make uh, mostly through LinkedIn. And uh, just reach out to them stating that one, like uh, I have reached out to random people. Uh, in fact, it, uh, yeah, it happened for me. It was a COVID time. It was, it was so difficult for me to, uh, me to find a job. And uh, one day it happened that I, I stood in front of Yambo for one hour and I randomly approached to people and connected them uh, uh, connected them in LinkedIn and actually it helped. So uh, so so it's about the connections you make. Uh, usually, if they are from the same background, like I used to go to Bahar and I randomly talk to people because there is definitely more Indian population there. And if you if you're from back uh, from in uh, from India or anywhere from the South Asian region, uh, they help you because they know the struggles of internationals here as a non-Europeans. So mostly they help you. At least they will uh, they will put you your recommendation. I mean, they, definitely they won't uh, put you in the position because and they won't arrange your interview. But so the rest of the uh, the rest of the contribution will be yours. But to the interview or at least uh, reaching your CV to the correct person, they help you a lot. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you very much for giving your time for this uh, discussing about the part-time jobs, jobs and internships in computer science, data science in Netherlands. In the next video, we will discuss about uh, very briefly about the master thesis because I have talked many times in different videos that uh, thesis is a very integral part when you are doing a master's in Netherlands or maybe in most European countries. So. Stay tuned for the next video. Don't forget to smash the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Share this video. Help each other out. Thank you, Leonard, for giving your time. And till next video, goodbye from Netherlands.